Good morning students and, went, and welcome back to our online classes. So we were doing salts and we have already learned different methods by which we can prepare salts, some of their reactions like different chemical processes through which salts are produced and we learned preparation of different types of salts like we learned the salts of chlorides, sulfates, carbonates, nitrates, etc. Now in our today's class, we are going to learn about properties of salt. And we are going to see some general properties of salt one by one. So let us start our today's class with general properties of salt. Now we all know that salt salts contains ions. Why? Because they are formed by the interchange of ions between acids and bases. So salts are ionic compounds or electrovalent compounds. And salts in their molten state or aqueous state are very very good electrolytes that means they conduct electricity second <clears throat> salts are non-volatile solids and they exist in the form of crystals non-volatile means they do not vaporize and they do not change into vapors so salts are non-volatile solids or in fact non-volatile crystalline solids now most of the salts are soluble in water except there are few salts which are not soluble in water or the solubility is very very less in cold water but if the salts are treated with warm water hot water then the solubility increases let us now see some examples of water soluble and insoluble salts all compounds of ammonium sodium and potassium are water soluble so all salts which contains ammonium sodium or potassium ions they are water soluble for example ammonium NH4Cl ammonium chloride sodium chloride potassium chloride these type of salts which contains ammonium ion sodium ion or potassium ion they are all water soluble all nitrates and nitrites are also water soluble for example sodium nitrate this is water soluble potassium nitrate this is also soluble in water all chlorides bromides and iodides are also soluble in water except hg2cl2 mercury chloride silver chloride agcl lead chloride they are not soluble in cold water but if we add this thing in hot water these salts in hot water then they will dissolve so their solubility depends upon the temperature of water all sulfates are water soluble all sulfates such as sodium Na2SO4 sodium sulfate then potassium sulfate ammonium sulfate they are all water soluble except calcium sulfate lead sulfate and barium sulfate they are water insoluble if you recall our previous session where we learned the preparation of insoluble salts by precipitate precipitation method that is this double displacement method then these were the salts which we learned to prepare 
they are calcium salt also formed calcium sulfate also formed Precipi precipitate lead sulfate also forms precipitate and barium sulfate also forms precipitate that means they are insoluble now all the carbonates sulfides sulfites and phosphates of ammonium sodium and potassium are water soluble whereas the carbonate sulfide sulfites phosphates of others like calcium carbonate zinc carbonate iron sulfide they are all water insoluble so in general what we can say that all metallic oxides and hydroxides of sodium potassium and ammonium are soluble water soluble while the rest are all insoluble now we will see hydrolysis of salts now before going before understanding hydrolysis of salts we will first try to understand the term hydrolysis now hydrolysis is a phenomenon due to which salts formed by a weak acid and a strong base or by a strong acid and a weak base reacts with water to give an acidic or an alkaline solution so hydrolysis is a phenomenon it is a phenomenon due to which salts reacts with water to give either acidic solution or basic solution alkaline means basic solution that means we have two conditions over here let's take the first condition now acids are always formed by the one method is the neutralization process that is reaction of acid and base so if we take acids and bases of opposite strength like if we take if we take one as a strong and the other as weak then this hydrolysis phenomenon will take place for example first condition if the acid taken is weak if we have weak acid uh, undergoing reaction with strong base then also they will produce salt and water but these salt and water they react with again react with each other to form alkaline solution why alkaline solution because the salt which is produced is produced by strong base action of strong base on acid weak acid so the resultant solution will be alkaline basic in nature let's take example formic acid HCOOH formic acid reacts which is a weak acid organic acid reacts with sodium hydroxide which is a strong base to produce sodium carbonate salt plus water now since the strength of acid and base are different now these salts these products salt and water they again react with each other to produce weak acid and strong alkali and due to the presence of strong alkali produced over here the whole solution will be alkaline in nature let's go to second condition if the acid is strong but the base is weak then also they will produce salt and water but the salt and water produced will again react with each other to give acidic solution why because the acid is taken was strong okay so let's take example let's take hydrochloric acid this is strong acid react with iron 3 hydroxide or ferric hydroxide which is a weak base when these two react with each other they produce salt iron 3 chloride and water now these iron this salt and water they will again react with each other they undergo hydrolysis to produce strong acid HCl and weak base and because of this strong acid the resultant solution will be acidic in nature so this phenomenon due to which the salts produced the salt produced by the action of weak acid on strong base or strong acid on weak base produces reacts with water 
to produce either alkaline or acidic solution is known as hydrolysis of salt. Here you have to note that if the strength of acid and bases are same, then hydrolysis will not take place. For example, if you react strong acid with strong base, then hydrolysis will not take place. If you react weak acid with weak base, then also hydrolysis will not take place. The strength of acid and bases has to be different. Now, let us understand another property that is water of crystallization now water of crystallization so what do we mean by water of crystallization let us first try to understand that now what happens is sometimes some salts they unite some salts they unite with water they combine chemically they will not change their properties but they will combine chemically like this stick together and they give crystalline structure to the salt now these these water which remain chemically combined in definite quantity with the salt and this water gets evaporated can be lost easily on heating is known as water of crystallization so water of crystallization is actually a definite quantity of water chemically attached loosely with the soil so that this this water can be easily removed by heating the what is the uh, process by which we can change water to its gaseous form or liquid form by heating so we if we apply heat to this water say suppose 100 degrees celsius then this water the solid form of water will change into liquid leaving salt solid salt behind so if we heat this salt having water of crystallization then water will be lost it will be separated and dry salt will be left example of Water of crystallization can be like copper sulfate combines with five molecules of water. So here the definite quantity of water is five molecules of water. So five molecules of water combines loosely with copper sulfate giving it crystalline structure and color also. So the color of this whole compound is blue and its state is uh, solid structure is crystal crystalline structure so on heating this water will be lost and this copper sulfate salt will be in solid white powder form we can also reverse this process so if we bring white powder copper sulfate and add some water molecules like say suppose five water molecules then on cooling these two will again combine chemically loosely in a loose way to give back copper sulfate hydrated this is called hydrated copper sulfate why hydrated because th there is water so this water which remains attached with some compounds or salts giving it a crystalline structure is known as water of crystallization other example can be washing soda which is sodium carbonate decahydrate deca means 10 hydrate means water so sodium carbonate having 10 molecules of water na2co3 dot 10 h2o so this is another example of uh, salt having water of crystallization there are different examples other different examples given in your book i suggest you to go through each and every example and learn their name common name as well as their chemical name and their formulas so these are some of the examples given in your book the washing soda epsom salt global salt blue vitrol blue vitrol is copper sulfate which we did plaster of paris gypsum white vitrol zinc sulfate so uh, their common name 
their chemical name and their formulas are all given in your book in the tabular form i suggest you to go through these examples now let us see another important property and that is efflorescence now efflorescence is the property of some salts to lose wholly or partially their water of crystallization when their crystals are exposed to dry air even for a short time so say suppose this is one salt and it contains a water of crystallization so this will be in crystal form now salt loosely combined with a definite quantity of water so when this salt is exposed in dry air even for a short period of time what will happen this water will be lost in the atmosphere in the dry air so this dry air will absorb water and separate salt from water so now what will be left water will be removed it will be lost in the air or atmosphere and dry salt will be there so this dry salt can be in powder form also so it is efflorescence is the property of some salts to lose wholly it can sometimes lose whole amount of water or partially also it will leave some water in the salt okay in the atmosphere when they are exposed in dry air let's see some examples washing soda so we all know washing soda is a sodium carbonate having 10 molecules of water when this washing soda is exposed in dry air it will lose nine molecules of water major portion of water of crystallization is lost leaving only one molecule of water so there is loss of water molecule and this is this property is called efflorescence another example can be epsom salt magnesium sulfate magnesium sulfate contains seven molecules of water of crystallization and when it is exposed to dry air it loses six molecules of water leaving one molecule of water in the crystal magnesium sulfate crystal this, these over here you, we can see partial removal of water of crystallization let's go to let's see global salt now global salt is sodium sulfate having 10 molecules of water of crystallization when exposed to dry air will wholly lose water of crystallization water molecule leaving dry sodium sulfate salt so this phenomenon or this property of a salt to lose wholly or partially their water of crystallization when exposed in dry air is known as efflorescence now let us see another property hygroscope copic now this property can be of salt or can be of any other substance now let us try to understand this hygroscopic substances now some salts or substances for example quicklime concentrated sulfuric acid or silica gel when they are exposed in atmosphere now from the atmosphere they will absorb water molecule so they they initially they don't have any water molecule so when they are exposed to air atmosphere from the atmosphere they will absorb this water molecules and but after absorbing water molecule they will not dissolve in that particular water which they absorb they will still remain in solid state so they will not dissolve in this water which they absorb so such substances which absorbs water from the atmosphere but does not dissolve in that water are known as hygroscopic substances so remember they absorb water but they do not dissolve in that absorbed water this type of substances are called hygroscopic substances quicklime is an example of hygroscopic substance they absorb 
water but they do not dissolve in it concentrated sulfuric acid is also example of hygroscopic substances silica gel these silica gel is also an example of hygroscopic substances and silica gels are very widely used in our fashion industries like if you buy a shoe a pair of shoes inside that pair of shoes you'll find two small small pouches containing silica why because these shoes need to be free from these shoes need to be free from water because if they contain water on their surfaces the shoe the leather of the shoe might get damaged so what the manufacturers do they put some silica gel in small pouches so that this silica gel absorbs the moisture which are present if they are present inside the shoe and hence keeps the pair of shoes dry and now finally we will see some deliquescent substances now this can be again salt or any other substances now some salt or substances for example sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide calcium chloride uh, magnesium chloride magnesium chloride these substances when they are exposed to atmosphere they will absorb water molecule like hygroscopic substances they will absorb water molecule but now they will they will become moist and ultimately finally they will dissolve in the absorbed water forming saturated solution what is the difference between hygroscopic and deliquescent substances hygroscopic substances after absorbing water they do not dissolve in that absorbed water whereas deliquescent substances after absorbing water from the atmosphere they dissolve in that absorbed water and form saturated solution such substances are called deliquescent substances examples can be sodium hydroxide caustic potash potassium hydroxide caustic uh, sorry sodium hydroxide is ca caustic soda potassium hydroxide caustic potash calcium chloride CaCl2 magnesium chloride MgCl2 now remember you must have uh, you all have learned in class 9 regarding the solubility of salt the table salt NaCl now NaCl is a dry crystalline solid the salt which we eat now pure salt pure salt is not deliquescent in nature if they are if we keep pure salt exposed in the air then it will not absorb water but the salt which we eat that we buy from the market they absorb water if they are exposed in the air what is the reason behind that the reason behind that is because nowadays the salt which we eat the salt which we eat contains lots of impurities they are not pure due to certain requirements due to uh, due to additional uh, minerals which our body requires manufacturers put some impurities they don't they not only sell sodium chloride they add some other ingredients also and they mostly add magnesium chloride calcium chloride like this to provide additional minerals so these substances now they have they are deliquescent substances so sodium chloride the salt which we eat they also contain sodium chloride they also contain magnesium chloride calcium chloride so the presence of these impurities in our everyday salt makes the salt dissolve in dissolve when they are exposed for a longer period of time in the open air because of the presence of deliquescent substance they absorb water and they melt and form a saturated solution so this much for today boys we have learned many properties many phenomena also and in our next class we are going to learn two more important properties 
until then I suggest you to go through your book see different examples learn the definition of all the terms which we have learned today and do your assignments on time stay safe and do all things well